All right, guys, I'm going to run through uh, the business plan that Ross came up with. We've had trouble with scheduling. We wanted to do this together, but um, this will be great, too, because I can look through it, give some honest feedback. I helped a little bit uh, just getting them started, but this is how simple this is. There's nothing to it, okay? Uh, so right up top, that's your executive summary. And Ross is telling us, first, his background. Tie it in as best you can to what you want to do. Uh, he's got seven years of logistics and freight management experience. Close to the moving world is perfect. Uh, he's identified this niche market for deliveries in the Central North Carolina region. And then this is important. Our little differentiator is the brand will be based around caring for clients' homes and products and will represent itself as professional and reliable. Perfect. Like, sounds good, sound clean, copacetic. Here's how the business is going to find profits. If you're not making any money, you just have a hobby, you don't have a business. And uh, moving furniture all day would be a really crazy hobby. So we want to make sure we're profitable. We're going to do that by managing costs, uh, pricing competitively, and then expanding. Okay. Uh, competitive advantage that we have is access to vehicles, equipment, and a network of customers through the existing business. Right. Perfect. Uh, business description's blank because the next video I'm going to do is going to be on how to set up an LLC. If it's a simple one-member LLC, I would never use anything like LegalZoom. So easy for you to do it on your own. I'll show you how. Mine will be, uh, or this one for Ross will be specific to the state of North Carolina, but I've done them in multiple states. It's the easiest thing in the world. So never pay a fee to start a business other than the fee you got to pay to the state um, to register that business. So... It's blank, but we'll look at that tomorrow. Market analysis, first is our prospects. Uh, so these are all just off the top of the mind. There's about 40 more. We'll get to that. This is a good place to start. Competition, uh, this is as little as Ross knows. There's some more out there, but there's not a ton. There's a few big uh, moving companies that do do some delivery, but we will find them as we go. For example, like Trosa sometimes does something. So we'll find them as we go. Not too worried about competition because I can tell you from trying to find somebody that everybody's booked or they're not that good, okay? Target market, consignment stores in the area listed above. That's our where we're starting. And individuals, downsize, donations, fine furniture, local moves. I would get rid of local moves. We don't want to get in the moving business but any furniture store. Okay, I would add that. Mattresses, I mean, there's a lot here. Like you can grow this thing. So our marketing and sales strategy, again, the network, we're gonna use relationships with Always Home. We're gonna ask for positive customer feedback. So he's gonna try to get Google reviews for Always Home and for his own business. That adds value to Always Home, keeps us happy as a customer. Brilliant idea, probably not necessary, but a good idea and it would be part of his marketing and sales strategy. Drop-ins, hey, I'm Ross with so-and-so moving, beautiful. This is where I would spend 80% of my money for a business like this, I mean my time for a business like this. And he even said business cards and flyers possible later down on the road. So. Uh, next is your op plan. Let's see if we can space this down just to clean it up. There we go. So use the setup at Always Home and other locations if they need a system built. So I built a pretty good system. If somebody's got a real mess, you can bring that in there. I would add that as a service. Hey, let me handle your entire logistic problem. All you do is get the customer's <clears throat> information and I'll call, schedule, coordinate with them, everything. That's super valuable. So I would add that and I would charge um, a fee for that either to the company or to the client, likely to the client and let it just pass through, build that into your pricing. And finally, the customers can take a card, call you to schedule. If the person, it, maybe the vendor or the shop doesn't want like an attached moving service, they just want to sell furniture, perfect. Can I put a stack of my cards up here? If somebody buys something that's too big for them to get, they can give me a call. Risk analysis. So this is important. And Ross, to his credit, actually picked out one of the biggest ones. 
the second one, the first one's not really a problem. The second one, helper dependability. Okay, in this space, people are going to miss work. They're going to show up drunk. It's tough. So this is a good one, and you combat that by getting really good people, paying them well, but also having a rotation, right? You need somebody you can call when somebody calls out. Time distribution with other tasks. Yeah, he's got a lot going on, but you work a calendar. That's not a problem. Lack of understanding of the delivery space. That's a good one, but I've got him working right now, so he'll learn that. It's uh, fairly simple once you've got the technique on how to move furniture, okay? Cash flow management, always an issue with any business. And if you've never done it before, it can be your biggest one. If you run out of cash, you can it go upside down immediately. So logistics, so this is an interesting one. We keep the vehicles at the shop. It's about 30 minutes away in Durham. If you start getting accounts in Raleigh, what are you going to do? At that time, you'll need to expand and add a vehicle. But growth is uh, the healthiest thing in the business world. Services offered, pricing, so central location, and then one to 10 miles is 125 bucks, 10 to 25 miles is 150, 25 or more is the 150 plus two miles past that, so you're like, wow, that's a lot of money. That's built off of what the market supports. Um, We charge that at the shop, the other shops charge right around there. Individuals actually charge a bit more, so that's uh, real real realistic and it it takes care of your cost of a helper time gas everything like there's still a good margin there and I would also do like a daily contracted rate so if I could get a company like we do where we just pay you every Tuesday thousand bucks come out here handle all the deliveries perfect Um, shoot for eight 800 to 1,000 bucks a day, depending on how much they got going on. If you can line some contracts up, it's good because then it's not hand to mouth. You can get some predictable cash flow projections. So when you're thinking about services, anything that you can make repeatable or um, you see all these monthly boxes, you know, where people order camping gear and they get a surprise box every month. Anything like that that you can do is just fantastic. So... Um, sort of like a subscription model we want uh, re- repeat business so there it is very simple if you do this you can now make some decisions you can layer SWOT analysis over this but for what we're doing this is good enough for us to execute on right like there's nothing that I'm missing in here that is going to cause many problems tomorrow we will build a business I'll record that show you how to do it and next week we will be in operation and we'll show you what that looks like